Hello, everybody, and welcome to the Quick and Carry Kitchen. I'm Kristen Madrine, and welcome to this cold January day where I have a great, warm, comforting soup for you to make this weekend. This is super easy, but it gives me a chance to explain a couple of cooking terms that people ask me about all the time. So cooking class is about to begin. I want to welcome all of you who are joining us live. Hello, how are you today? Let us know you're here with a comment down below. And hello to all of you who watch us later. We're always glad that you can join us. I want everyone to give a big congratulations to last week's winner of our Quick and Carry Tongs. Angela Moore Woolhams is our winner from last week's show. And if you leave us a comment down below this week about what your favorite soup is, one of you will win for next week. So be sure to leave us a comment and let us know that you're there. So I want to give a shout out to Cheryl at 40aprons.com, which is a wonderful website, blog, recipes, organized, beautiful photographs. Cheryl, you do a great job, and I appreciate all the hard work that you put into that. This is Cheryl's recipe for chicken pot pie soup. And this uh, particular soup is uh, paleo and Whole30 approved. You can eat it on either of those diets. There's no gluten, there's no dairy, um, no grains of any kind in it. So it's pretty clean eating and it's really delicious. So I want to show you what's going on over here in the foodie. For a little while now, before the show started, I've been cooking my mirepoix, which is spelled M-I-R-E-P-O-I-X, and this is a uh, French word, mirepoix, for the celery, onions, and carrots that all get sauteed together. Uh, those of you in the South might have heard it called the Holy Trinity. And a lot of foods are based on how this is cooked. You try to chop them pretty much the same so all of the pieces are uniform. And then you saute them for about five minutes on hot, either in an instant pot or in a foodie. The saute is very, very hot. And then once those are done, you're going to want to add some minced garlic. And this is about five or six cloves of garlic that I've minced this morning. And you add that at the end for about 30 seconds, maybe a minute. You just want to get it fragrant. And the reason that you do that is because if you let the garlic cook the entire time that the mirepoix is cooking, it will be burnt and people don't like that taste. So this is a way to kind of hide garlic, but get its flavor. So just 30 or so seconds, just stir it around in there. You can start to smell it. It becomes very fragrant. And then you add the cooking liquid. And this is what we call deglazing the pan. And if you've watched my show before, you'll know that this is my favorite part of cooking. This is where you really get the flavor. Now, on the bottom of the foodie, you're not going to get the same sort of browned bits that you get when you cook on the bottom of a regular pot or in an instant pot. But you still want to do a deglaze, which is to just put in a little. And you hear it sort of simmer. And you get all the stuff that's on the bottom. Do you see that? Very nice. You can kind of hear that it's all simmering more. And then you're going to add the rest of the broth. And with this, you'd need about two cups of the broth, unless you're doubling it, which you can certainly do in a foodie. Use a whole box. All right. Hi, Judy Burr. How are you? Hello from Texas. Bet it's warmer where you are, Judy, than it is here. All right. So there you have all that nice stuff cooking in there. And now I'm going to add all my potatoes. Here we go. These are red potatoes, but you can certainly use Idaho's. You can use white. You could use Yukon gold. I think because in a, in a um, chicken pot pie, reds are usually used, and they do give a nice color. 
So you're just going to stir in your potatoes. And then I have already cut up chicken. I've used um, chicken thighs today, but you can use breasts, whatever you have available. Hi, Debbie Griffin, how are you today? Now I'm going to just put all of the chicken in and then I'm going to stir it around because what I discovered making it the first time is that otherwise it kind of lumps together during cooking. So give it a nice stir. There we go. And then you're going to take some sprigs of thyme. And um, you can take a couple runs past off of it like this with the, your hands or with a knife and get some of the green off. But don't go overboard. Instead, take the sprigs of thyme, lay them across the top, and as it steams and infuses, you'll get the flavor of the thyme without it being too much, which I appreciate because thyme is awesome, but you can have it overdone in certain recipes, and you don't want to do that. All right, I've put on the lid. And I always have to figure out my foodie. I'm still getting used to it. You're going to do pressure cook for 10 minutes. And that's in either an instant pot or in a foodie. Pressure cook the recipe for 10 minutes. All right, let's see who's here. Hi, Ruth Light. Oh, hi, Kathy Leathers. <laughs> you, uh, you know me, too. I love Zuppa Toscana soup. That's one of Kathy's favorite and cheeseburger. I think Zuppa Toscana is like my favorite thing to eat. Hi, Joanne Pope. Hi, Terry Banks. How are you? Jill, nice to see you with us this morning. Oh, oh so many friends of the kitchen. Hi, Leanne. How are you? Lily Krupa, my neighbor and friend. Good morning. Hi, Margaret. How are you? Friend of the kitchen. Margaret is with us today. I'm so glad to see you all here. People, this is a wonderful recipe. Let me hold this up for you so you can see what it looks like when it's finished. I hope you can see that. Um, it's very creamy, very thick, and very delicious. Super comforting. All right, let's talk about the cream because this is something that I love to use and I want to share this with all of you because it's kind of interesting. In this jar, and again, I'm going to hold it up to our super cool extra camera that we have now. In this jar, I have raw cashews that have soaked in hot water for about a half an hour or so, and then I drain the water off. And as you can see, they plump up. They get nice and full. Just by themselves, if I, if I blended this, it would make cashew cream, which is delicious. It's a versatile, non-dairy cream that you can use in so many recipes, including things like cheesecake. Um, <laughs> uh, oh, Jennifer wants to know what are we making? We are making a um, chicken pot pie soup that is dairy free. So that's why I'm teaching you about this particular way of making a cream for any soup for a lasagna, for if you're trying to get away from eating dairy, this is a great combination. So um, many years ago, I went to New York City and trained as a vegan pastry chef. And uh, when you do that, how does a vegan make a cheesecake, for instance? Well, uh, cream made out of cashews is the way to do that. It's delicious. It doesn't have a nutty taste. It's just full-bodied, beautiful, creamy, and I think delicious. It's lovely. If you combine the cashews with coconut milk, you can make an even better and fuller cream. So if you do this and you have a high-speed blender, it's great to do it in a blender. And um, I'm doing it with my immersion blender because I'm here on set with you today. So I'm going to take my immersion blender and I have a, a can of uh, full fat coconut milk and a cup of soaked cashews. So watch what happens. Oh, it's going to be a mess. Here we go. 
A little bit more noise. There we go. Perfect. So I will hold this up again so that you can see it. And what we have here is a delicious, creamy, frothy concoction that um, in the soup is going to be super delicious. So after the 10 minute cook time, you can do a quick release, or if you're not in the room, it can sit for five or 10 minutes until you get back to it. One of the blessings of an Instant Pot is that you can walk away, come back when you're ready to finish the dish, let the rest of the pressure release, very carefully open your lid, and then you're gonna add, um, stir in the cream sauce and Add your seasonings at the end. The salt and pepper doesn't go in until the end. And then you have a delicious soup with cream and body in it that does make you feel like you're eating from a beautiful chicken pot pie. Um, hi, Debbie Griffin. How are you? Uh, v Smith. Oh, V likes ham and bean soup. How are you today, V? Yes, V, this is a foodie. We are... Uh, learning our way through cooking with a foodie and we still of course love our instant pot I'm really impressed with the foodie I really like everything about it except this the big thing on the side the big um, heating element over here is the only thing that is difficult with this because it takes up so much room but otherwise I love cooking with a foodie it really is an amazing amazing appliance uh, all right, so let's go over where we're at with the recipe. You have boneless chicken, uh, either breasts or thighs. You saute your, um, oh, and let me just say you want to cube up your chicken before you cook it in this case. You put in the celery, carrots, and onions and saute them in the bottom of the pot. You can use your favorite oil if you're doing Whole 30, like I am, we stay over in the avocado, ghee, or um, olive oil area for ours. So um, that's a, a real nice avocado oil, is a great oil to cook vegetables at high temperature with. And so you do the mirepoix or the Holy Trinity and cook it for about five minutes, get everything nice and soft. Add your garlic at the end of that and just saute your garlic for 30 to 60 seconds, not very long. Add the broth at that point, deglazing the pan. Add in the potatoes, add in the diced chicken. Put the thyme on its sprigs across all of that. Put your lid on, set your timer for 10 minutes. Walk away, go do something else, take the dogs out help the kids with the homework, whatever you need to do. After the beeper goes off, you can either do a quick release with this one or let it natural pressure release. Get your cream ready because you're gonna add the cream, the coconut cream and cashew cream at the end. Once that's in there, add the salt and pepper. If you wanna add a little bit of thyme uh, because you like that flavor in your soup, that was a perfect time to do it. And then you can serve it with maybe some parsley or a little bit of sage on top. It's a delicious and heartwarming soup. All right, so I wanna also say that um, you can use dairy with this, but you don't wanna cook the dairy in with the rest of the soup as it's cooking. Pressure cooking dairy can be problematic, and that's why most recipes call for either a, a vegan or a non-dairy cream or regular dairy cream or milk of any kind. Usually, not all the time, but usually it's best if you leave it to the end so that it doesn't curdle. And then it can still be very hot in the Instant Pot, but you just don't want to put your dairy under pressure. So for those of you 
who don't have coconut milk and you want to make this recipe, you absolutely can use um, evaporated milk in it. You could use almond milk, but it's a little thin, so it won't have this luxurious, creamy, thick feeling. Uh, this, I thought after I ate some of it this morning, you almost could put this between a crust and bake it and have it be a perfect chicken pot pie. It's almost like you're making a filling for a chicken pot pie, but it's a soup. It's rich, it's creamy, and it really is delicious. I know that all of the quick and carry people have been sniffing around the Instant Pot waiting for lunch, so I can't wait to feed my colleagues. They're gonna love this recipe. All right, remember, you can always ask us questions. Uh, we love your comments and your feedback, ideas for future shows. Let us know what you want to see come out of the Quick and Carry Kitchen. We're so glad that you joined us today. If you want the recipe, just say yes when we ask you. We're happy to send you a PDF of our recipe. We know that some of you now have like a huge cookbook collected of quick and carry PDF recipes that we've sent you. And I think that's wonderful. I'm thrilled. If we can help you learn to be a better cook and learn to love cooking in your Instant Pot. That's why we do this is for you. So thanks again for joining us today. Let us know what we can do to help you out and leave a comment down below. One of you will win a set of quick and carry tongs. My favorite thing in the kitchen is my set of quick and carry tongs. I think I use them pretty much every day for something. They are so sturdy and they're great for uh, using these hot appliances. You want um, appl uh, uh, utensils that keep you far away from the heat and that's what these uh, nice quick and carry utensils do. So we're gonna have some chicken pot pie soup for lunch here in the quick and carry kitchen. Let me know if you make it and what you think of the recipe. And as truly a child used to say, bon appetit. <laughs>